Is your garage a heaping mound of junk ready to topple over when you hit the garage opener? Are there clothes all over your bedroom floor and suitcases waiting to be unpacked from the trip three weeks ago? Has your kitchen counter become the designated spot for purses, keys, homework, newspapers, backpacks, and bills? I'm Terry Savelle Foy, your cheerleader of dreams. Let's talk about eight everyday habits to keep your house clean and clutter free. And I want to ask you a favor real quick before we get started. Would you help me out a little this week by letting me know if you're enjoying these weekly videos by subscribing. I love knowing that these are truly helpful and encouraging for you. And when you subscribe, that's sort of my thumbs up to keep going. So if you don't mind, push that little red arrow below right now. And I want to say thank you so much for connecting with me. It means the world to me. And I want to mention real quick, this is the last week I'm offering my free book, Declutter Your Way to Success for my subscribers. I'll show you how to get started organizing and decluttering. How all of this is just preparation for where God wants to take you. Getting your home in order, it's more important than you may even realize. You know, it was my first directive on my path to success. Clean my house. Can you believe that? Well, right after I did, nine months later, I was promoted as the CEO of an international organization. So I'll even show you how to cash in on your clutter. You know, you could have thousands of dollars just laying around from stuff that you don't even want. You'll discover how to profit from your possessions. So just get the book and get started. Click the link in the description. So your home, it should reflect a place of comfort. And comfort and clutter do not go hand in hand. Now, when you look around in your home, how does it make you feel? Do you feel embarrassed, overwhelmed, ashamed, stressed? You know, a recent survey discovered that one third of respondents said they avoid spending time at home so they don't have to deal with their mess. Well, a mess has been defined as any disagreement between the way you desire things to be and the way they actually are. So keep in mind, everyone's idea of a clean, clutter-free, and organized home will be different. And don't feel guilty about what is, you decide is you know, the best for you. The goal in this video is to create order, peace, and new behavior patterns that lead you to a more productive and rewarding life. Now, why is it so important that we declutter our lives and get organized? Well, there's a wealth of reasons, including the connection between organization and success. So to put it bluntly, clutter blocks success. Now, I'm all about cheering you on to live your dreams and giving you the keys to do it. Well, believe it or not, getting organized is part of your preparation for success. You know, I was reading an article where a lady was pouring her heart out to a professional organizer. She said this phrase, she said, I feel like I could, you know, if I could just get rid of all the clutter, I could go on and do great things. Without hesitation, the organizer said, maybe that's why you keep the clutter. The lady was shocked, you know, and a little defensive. Surely she wasn't insinuating that her disorganization and clutter was some sort of, you know, internal excuse for underachieving in life. Or maybe it was. Now, I'm not saying that about you, but I am saying, once your home feels in order, then you do feel a sense of motivation to go after your bigger goals. See, when you don't have that nagging feeling of needing to get that room cleaned up, you feel free to go invest your time in your future. But today, I wanna focus on how do you maintain that order and organization? Because that's where most of us fail. You know, we can assign a few days to deep clean, declutter, sort things, and then give it a few weeks and we go right back to where we started. So we have to establish habits, routines, and rituals that we just automatically do. So here are my eight everyday habits to keep your house clean and clutter free. Number one, put things back where they go immediately. Now keep in mind, everything needs a home. Everything, your car keys, your cell phone, your mail, your jackets, backpacks, schoolwork, purses, everything. Now the reason things pile up is simply because we don't have a designated spot for them. The broken watch, the unopened mail, the stacks of photos, the unused Christmas gifts, the umbrellas. You have to find a place for these things. And again, you can't be vague or indecisive about it, 
Because once you assign a place for every single thing, then you have to determine to put things where they go as soon as possible. For example, as soon as you take your coat off, hang it right then in the coat closet. As soon as you walk in the door, hang your keys on the designated key hook. As soon as you get the mail, put it in the box or the bin labeled for mail. Don't throw socks on the floor or leave jeans on a chair or toss your shirt across the bed. No, always put them where they belong immediately. And when you do this over and over again, You'll get it ingrained in you and you'll start to feel weird when things aren't where they belong. This helps you maintain a standard of excellence in yourself and in your home. Number two, make your bed every day. I know everyone says this, but bear with me. Just this simple act right here can affect your whole mood for the day. It starts your day feeling productive before you even leave the house. You know, Admiral Bill McRaven, a 36 year Navy SEAL, he said this, he said, if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. Now here's why he said, if you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day and it'll give you a small sense of pride and it will encourage you to do another task and another and another. So you can see from this, it's not just about housekeeping. It's about your personal standard, your level of respect for yourself and your family. It shows up in your surroundings. In fact, your whole house will feel cleaner and put together just by making your bed. So start a new habit of never leaving your house without the bed made. Number three, load the dishwasher every night after dinner. Think of cleaning up the dishes as just part of the meal process. It's not done until it's clean and put away. And do it as soon as you finish dinner. This way it's not nagging on you all evening that you still need to go load the dishwasher and clean the kitchen. Now getting this done makes the whole kitchen feel clean and orderly. And you will love waking up to a clean kitchen. Number four, clear all countertops. You know, having a clear counter just makes everything look clean and organized. Again, the way you keep the countertops cleaned is by designating a place for everything. Let's go back to the keys, the mail, magazines, purses. You know, some items just don't need to be on the counters. So look at your kitchen counters, your bathroom counters, desk, nightstands. You know, what could be removed? Do you really use that panini maker <laughs> enough to leave it out every single day taking up space? If you only use it once a week, then hide it. Put it in a cabinet or in the pantry. Do you really need that blender out all day every day? If it's only used on Saturday night when the family makes milkshakes, <laughs> then hide it. See, too much stuff on the counters makes the whole area just look cluttered. So could you put away laptops or binders instead of leaving it out on the desk? Clean off bathroom countertops. Use bins, baskets, or utensil trays to organize your toiletries. In fact, watch this video where I shared 25 ways to organize your home by purchasing creative organizers from the Dollar Tree. You're gonna love how streamlined everything looks with those tips. Now, while we're discussing having a clear bathroom counter, I'd also like to add, why not clean your sink every morning? It just makes you feel organized and clean. And the best way to make this a habit is to get a small bucket, get your cleaning supplies and a brush and keep it right under your sink. When you have to walk all the way to the laundry room or the kitchen to get the supplies, you'll put it off. So do it right after you finish getting ready. Number five, designate a spot and a day for laundry. Now obviously you need laundry baskets for dirty clothes to be tossed. And here's the key. It needs to be communicated with each family member <laughs> that that's where it goes, right? Now, I still don't understand why after 28 years of marriage, my husband still drops his dirty clothes in front of the laundry basket. I will never comprehend that reasoning. <laughs> but you choose your battles, right? I've learned, just pick it up, don't complain, and toss it in. He does so many other wonderful things for me. This is the one he may never change and I've learned to adjust. I don't understand it, but I've adjusted. Anyway, <laughs> in addition to having designated spots for laundry to be stored, choose a day to do laundry. Now, I learned this years ago when I was stressed out about everything in my life, working a full-time job, being a youth pastor at the time, raising a four-year-old, paying bills, doing laundry, grocery shopping, dancing ballet classes for my daughter, ministering to the youth. 
You can see, I was overwhelmed. I remember driving home, collecting the mail from the mailbox and feeling overwhelmed, thinking, oh my gosh, I need to pay the bills after dinner. Then I walked into my daughter's bathroom and saw towels on the floor and I thought, oh my gosh, I need to do laundry. Finally, I learned, designate certain days to certain tasks. For example, laundry is done every Saturday morning. Bills are paid every Sunday night. Grocery shopping is every Tuesday, and so on. Well, this just freed me up and it alleviated so much stress when I would pick up the dirty clothes off the floor Wednesday night and think, don't stress about it. Laundry is Saturday, so don't think about it on Wednesday. Now, some people recommend doing one load each day, five days a week, so you're not overwhelmed with doing it all in one day. So do what works for you. But the easiest solution is to make it a part of a routine. Every night during dinner, start one load. Do what works for you. Number six is mail. Now, when it comes to organizing your mail, put it all in one place. As soon as you collect it, sort through the pile and immediately throw away the junk. Do it right then. Don't leave it on the counter to have to be dealt with later on. Put only what you need in the box or the bin labeled for mail. 23% of Americans don't pay their bills on time and pay late fees because they've lost the statement. They don't know where their bills are. Well, if all your bills go in one designated spot, you'll never lose them again. Then decide a certain day you will pay the bills. Put it on your calendar. What gets scheduled gets done. So store your bills in one spot and designate one day to pay them each week. Number seven, the do it now rule. Here's what it is. If you can finish something in less than two minutes, then do it now. When you take your clothes off at the end of the day, complete the ritual by either putting them in the dirty clothes hamper or hang them back up. It's a one step process when you follow up immediately. Otherwise, you throw them in the floor or across a chair only to be attended to another time. Do it now, just get that ingrained. You know, it's the same with the dishes. Don't stack the dishes in the sink after dinner. You're making it harder on yourself by having to return to that chore at a later time and tidy up. Load plates in the dishwasher as soon as you finish dinner. It's done. So don't create extra steps for yourself that only welcome that overwhelming feeling of so much still to do. Just do it now. That's the same with the mail tip we gave in number six. When you bring in the stack of mail from the mailbox, immediately toss the junk mail in the trash can and sort the bills to be placed in the spot marked for bills. Don't store the junk mail only to be sorted through again. Just do it now. So this behavior will instantly reduce clutter and stress from building up. And number eight, the five minute tidy up. Now, before you go to bed for the night, just do a quick walk through the main areas and do your best to tidy things up. So you wake up to a clean home. Now the living room is called that for a reason. We do most of our living in that space. And although it's not difficult to get organized, it can be a challenge to keep it organized. So if your couch has a console, then just get into the habit of putting newspapers, remote controls, coasters in that storage. If you have cabinets, store blankets, pillows, and games in a neat hidden place. Put the blankets away, fluff the pillows, and go to bed. Now let me stress again why this is so important. One organizing expert said, clutter matters because it takes up space not just in your surroundings, but in your head. Of the two, she said the psychological effect of clutter is the most important. The mood, the atmosphere, the emotional state changes instantly. So the organization of your surroundings reflects the organization of your life. Where there's clutter in your home, there will be a degree of clutter in you. So I wanna help you so much more by giving you my book, Declutter Your Way to Success, absolutely free this week. All you have to do is you pay the shipping and I will send it right to your house. So click the link in the description to access your free book today. I hope this helped you and I wanna say thank you again for subscribing. I truly appreciate it and remember, I'm cheering you on to live your dreams. Hey YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and for more inspirational content, click one of the two videos right there. And remember, I'm cheering you on to live your dreams.